Hello students, you are watching the Unique Academy's YouTube channel. I am Vishwas Nimbalkar and you are watching in-depth series. In this series, today we are going to discuss about hate speech and the blasphemy law in India. So let's begin first by, as usual, the news. But here today, we don't have the news, but we have about, because this was, this particular thing has been taken from a particular article that appeared in the Hindu newspaper. So we are discussing about that article. So what is it basically? So in order to maintain the credibility, or just to even before that, if I have to give you the credibility of uh, or the news of this, then you know the Alt News founder, uh, Mohammed Zubair, uh, who goes with the name of Zubier or Zubier on Twitter. He was arrested by and there were multiple FIR files against him. So that was the news particularly. On the basis of that news, then various other articles also appeared. And out of that article, one of the articles I found was very interesting. And that's why we are discussing this. So basically, in order to maintain the credibility of a democratic free society, the article emphasizes the necessity of distinguishing between hate speech and blasphemous substance whether in voice or writing. So what is it? See, India is a free country. Article 19 gives us certain freedom, which are fundamental rights. And Article 32 guarantees that these fundamental rights should be always followed, right? Okay, Article there is 19, there is 32, and there are other fundamental rights also. So Article 19, freedom of speech and expression, and there is also Article 92, which is doing a restriction on that. So that is one part of freedom of speech and expression. But at the same time, freedom of speech and expression is not an absolute thing. It is, we all know there are certain reasonable restrictions to it. But then there are, there is something called as in blasphemy. Now, this word, Blasphemy. It is what when you hurt the religious sentiments, hurt the religion, hurt the religion or sentiments by any any possible ways, then we can call it to be a blasphemy. So there are many countries which are having a blasphemous law. Uh, so over here, the writer of this article emphasizes that there should be a clear cut distinction between hate speech and the blasphemous law. Right. So in India's anti-blasphemy legislation, the closest comparable to blasphemy law in India is a section 295A of the Indian Penal Code. You'll be surprised to know India does not have a blasphemy law as such. But there is one provision in the Indian Penal Code. Now, what is Indian Penal Code? Indian Penal Code is what? It is a book or it is a law that defines the crime and also it gives define it gives the punishment for that particular crime so that's why it is known as indian penal code which was written in 1860 there have been various amendments to it but still there are certain sections which are what you can say colonial in nature majority of them are colonial in nature so there is not a direct blasphemy law but there is one law which is near to the blasphemy law and that is 295a of the indian penal code remember that factual information which prohibits any speech writing or sign that with premediated and malicious purpose. Very important. See, when we talk about the crime, always remember, when we talk about the crime, intent and motive are very important. Intent and motive are very important. So when we are talking about this intent and motive, so if this act or any speech writing or such thing, which is done with a premediated and malicious purpose, Insult residents' religion. If it is insulting the religion, premediated act. If it is insulting the religion or religious belief, with a f then it is then there is a provision of fine and imprisonment up to three years. Okay, so that is just the factual information about it. Then what is Section 295A of Indian Penal Code? We will look into that part. Now, because of the country being predominantly Hindu population, India did not pass any anti-blasphemy law legislation until 1927. So, until 19, Hindu dominated, it is there. Majority of the population is Hindu. So, over here, if you are Hindu, uh, then the, the hurting the religious sentiments and all those things is altogether a different thing. So, being in predominantly Hindu religion, there was no blasphemy law as such. A satire publication published in 1927, however, contained obscene analogies to the Prophet's personal life that offended the Muslim community. So in 1927, one incident happened, which was a satire, which was satire, you understand, right? Uh, which has some uh, comedy humor into it. So that satire was published on the basis of uh, um, 
published on the life of the Prophet Muhammad and that was considered to be an obscene and uh, indecent and then it was questioned by the Muslim community. But then however the former High Court of Lahore at that time because we are talking about the pre-independent India ruled that the author of this could not be convicted because the literature did not inflame hate or antagonism between any groups. So it did not uh, it did not. There was like no direct confrontation between the groups and all those things. In 1927, we are talking about two groups did not find like what has happened now because of one uh, lady's comment on prophet and uh, comments and all those things. We will not get into those political things. They are not uh, even part of discussion. But at that time, no sentiments uh, as uh, the, the, or the outcome of the sentiments were seen in that particular thing. So inflame or hate or antagonism between any groups was not observed and hence section 153a which governs public order did not apply to the crime. So 153 of Indian Penal Code. Okay, it is related to the public order as the public order was not disturbed. So because of that what happened? And what we can say is that uh, the conviction did not happen. So that satire which was published, the publisher and the one who had actually made that satire were actually left out. As a result of this incident, uh, Section 295A was enacted to ensure that religious freedom is protected. Now because of that, because there is no law and because we do not have a retrospective law, we need a new law that was realized. And because of that, we have a 295A in the, in the Indian Penal Code after that particular incident in the 1927. Moving ahead. Now, what are the Supreme Court pronouncements on Indian Penal Code section 125A? So Article 19.2, what is Article 19.2? It is over here, see in the slide, we will come to that. And Section 295A, that is blasphemy, were distinguished in the Ramji Lal Modi case of 1957 by the Supreme Court bench of five justices. So five judges sat down, they decided what is the distinction between 19.2 and the blasphemy law. So first, let's see what is, we have seen 295A, what it is. Article 19.2. What it is, it allows reasonable reconstraints on freedom of speech and expression for benefit of public order. So we all know liberty is never absolute. It is qualified and there is there will always be the restrictions of it. So Article 19.2 also provides reasonable restrictions on that. But punishment under Section 295A deals with severe blasphemy that is committed with the intentional intent. Intent is important of insulting religious sensibilities of any class the Supreme Court reasoned, right? So that is the Supreme Court's pronouncements on the Section 295A of the Indian Penal Code. Further, thus the Supreme Court ruled that Section 295A only covered intentional insults. Intentionally, if you are insulting the religious sentiment, then it is a blasphemy. Or we can say 295 applies. There is not word of word is not there called as a blasphemy. And not other forms of insult. Now there was another case in Ram Manohar Lohia versus Fatehgarh of Central Prison Superintendent Section 295A of the Indian Penal Code can only be retrieved if there is a direct link between the speech made and any public disorder that ensures that ensures. So now this is also important for considering the article 19 two reasonable restrictions or overall article 19 one which gives you the freedom of speech and expression to what extent you have freedom of speech and expression or where the reasonable restrictions apply so supreme court has already stated that if the speech is inciting the violence and if the out of the speech if there is a direct violence then you can see that there is a violation of freedom of speech and expression otherwise not so this was done in ramano loya Versus Fatehgarh Central Prison Supreme Court, Section 295A of India Penal Code can only be retrieved when there is a direct link between the speech made and any public disorder that ensures. So if you are making a speech and if there is a public disorder, then 295A may apply to it. So that was also stated by the Supreme Court. Now, when we talk about the hate speech, okay. Now, what is a hate speech? So report of India's 267th Law Commission. And on the basis of that, we will try to define hate speech. An incitement to hatred is described as a communication that principally targets 
an identifiable group of people such as persons ethnicity or gender identity or sexual orientation or religious belief so there are components so see first component incitement to hatred or communication so incitement to communicate to hatred is described as communication that principally targets the identifiable people so there should be incitement to hatred so hatred against the target group and which the target groups can be based on what they can be based on person's ethnicity gender identity sexual orientation religious belief so if you are targeting those people specifically then it is an hate speech okay so i hope you understand that is a very simple definition incitement to i will again repeat it an incitement to hatred is described as a communication that principally targets an identifiable group of people such as persons ethnicity or gender identity or sexual orientation or religious belief now what are the statistics related to the hate speech in india so according to national crime records bureau that is ncrb which is the, this is a report which is published by ministry of home affairs there has been a significant rise in number of cases where hate speech and racial hatred have been documented okay so increase is there it is stated in 2014 there was just 323 cases reported by 2020 that number is expected to 1804 cases got it so there is increase again moving ahead what how is how does indian penal code deal with the hate speech so there are provisions certain provisions in the indian penal code one is section 153a another is 153b of the indian penal code which punishes acts that inflame animosity and animity amongst the communities so if you are uh, if you are creating environment which is creating an hostile environment between two groups then it is basically uh, what you can say punishes acts and inflammatory animosity then it is we can say 153 and 153b is we will apply specifically section 295a of the ipc deals with punishing acts that intentionally or maliciously intention and malicious anger religious sensibilities of class of people another specific and important one right we have discussed this this is 295 okay then further content that may generate ill will or animosity amongst various communities is made an offense by section 5051 and 5052 of the indian penal code so that is the hate speech under the indian penal code now why according to the article why there is a need for distinct blasphemy laws and hate speech laws that is one of the very important thing that we are going to discuss now section 295a is open to wide range of interpretations because of its phrasing wide range of interpretation so that is like lawyers paradise lawyers will always interpret if it is if the wordings are not proper and if they are ambiguous and lawyers are going to explore that so deliberate contempt of religion or religious sensibilities cannot therefore be equated to incitement so if there is a deliberate contempt of religion or religious sensibilities then it cannot be said that okay it is uh, what can say or equated to the uh, incitement anti prejudice and equality are stated goals of the section 295a and hate speech provisions according to the supreme court okay so that is another thing and the third thing is the loopholes as a result of this disparity the legislation is still being used to criminalize hate speech so using the loopholes in 295a and all those things what is happening the criminalization of the hate speech or you are using the criminal procedures or to book the people so criminalize hate speech notwithstanding this interpretation of section 295a and the hate speech then we have restraint practicing self control although it may be debated or denounced there should be no legal action taken against someone for insulting religion or religious figures so that is another important point that see restraint practicing self control is the best thing why should one in, see i am from particular religion you are from party some another particular religion why should i be insulting your religious sentiment and you why should you also be hurting my religious sentiment why not have the self control over it so self control although it may be debated or denounced there should be no legal action taken against someone for insulting religion or religious figures hate speech laws are affirmed 
on distinction between criticizing religion and promoting prejudice or aggression towards individuals or a group because of their beliefs. So that is also needs to be followed. So again, re criticizing religion and promoting prejudice and aggression towards individuals or group or because of their beliefs should be avoided. This is the reason why this is so. Then what is the way ahead? Okay, so first is failure to distinguish between the criticism and deliberate hate speech weakens the equitable application of section 295A and makes it more difficult to define and punish the actual offense of the hate speech. So there should be, point is what, there should be clear distinction between the hate speech and the uh, other laws. Then blasphemy laws, blasphemy laws that restrict religious criticism in general are incompatible with the norms of a free society and democratic society. So hence, obviously with this point, even you can understand they should be given away. Hence, there should be no screening of dialogue and dissent also incompatible with the international convent on civil and political rights and blasphemy restrictions. Okay, so that also should be done. And the third and the last point, keeping blasphemy in the statutes for decriminalizing it, keeping it in the statutes for decriminalizing it. Therefore, the only conceivable alternative that balances the delicate line between protecting faith and challenging the hate speech. So that is what the things are. But overall, if we have to speak about the hate speech, blasphemy laws or every other thing in the community that we live into, one thing we have to understand is that Indian constitution has guaranteed everything that every individual wants. It has granted us freedoms. It has granted not freedoms, again, not only of speech and expression, but freedom of religion, freedom against exploitation. Okay, so the, all these provisions are already there in the constitution. What one has to do is to is to actually follow the constitution, follow the norms of the constitution, not as an individual, but also the state should be looking into whether the constitution is followed. If the constitution is followed in the real sense, then these problems will not be existing. The ambiguity does exist, but the ambiguity should not be utilized so as to just to challenge someone okay or just to have an intention or just to like uh, okay just i want to take the revenge so i will use this law against someone so that is not that is, that is never the intent of law and we live in a libertarian society and in libertarian society it is very important to protect the individual laws and the rights and regulations and every other thing of an individual and at the society at large if you protect it of individual it will be protected of the society also so with that, I hope you have understood whatever we have discussed in this particular session. That's it for, uh, that's it for this session. See you in another one. Thank you.